Hello from Disney's Wilderness Lodge. We are here to have some lunch as well as to do a scavenger hunt that we've never done before. Yeah. And then we're gonna go home and carve pumpkins for Halloween. So where we're hoping to go, and we'll probably try to join the walk-up list, is Geyser Point, which we've never eaten at before, and we talk about consistently whenever we come to Fort Wilderness, or the Wilderness Lodge. Okay, so I'm joining the walk-up list right now, and while we wait, we're going to go ahead and go get a map, I think, for the, uh, the pumpkin scavenger hunt, which that we should be able to pick up over at the front desk right over here. So that was incredibly easy. We walked through the front desk and we got our Wilderness Lodge Pumpkin Patch Scavenger Hunt. There are 13 pumpkins hidden all over the resort and we even had to get a map for it just so we know exactly where we're going. Not necessarily where we're going, but like what the places are called that we're going. Yes, because we have to find what each villain is in particular and then the location that we found it. We also got this hidden Mickey Scavenger Hunt. We might not do that one today because that one's a little bit I don't want to say that it's elaborate. This one's actually the more elaborate one, mm -hmm. and this will probably take up a lot of time. But we did get a text that our table is ready. There is one pumpkin behind Brennan back over there. We'll probably come back to that in a little bit. I don't know what it is. So we're seeing pumpkins already. That was Hades. Yeah. Should I run back and try to see what the other one was real quick? Yeah, because I couldn't tell from that far away. So I cannot tell for the life of me which pumpkin that is, which villain in particular. I think it's the Snow Queen or Maleficent. And now Brennan's writing down some of the villains on the paper. Is it the Evil Queen? So I thought it was the Snow Queen or Maleficent. Yeah, so I'm reading, I, I noticed that at the end of them it has like a little um, synopsis of where you can find it. So very handy with apples and mirrors, this queen is obsessed with being fairest of them all. Find her where you can ask questions and make reservations. No request is too big or too small. Okay. So evil queen and then you have Hades and it's just like um, he's plotting his revenge in an extra warm corner of the lobby. So that's right here. Okay. That's how you know. Interesting. Legend has it. This god of the underworld embraced his inner evil when, from Mount Olympus, he was spurned. He's plotting his revenge in an extra warm corner of the lobby. Don't get too close or you might get burned. Neat. You put the villain was the front desk. Oh. <laughs> All right, so we came outside. We're going down to Geyser Point because our table was called. It was only a 10 minutes wait for our walk-up list availability. So we're gonna go have some lunch and then continue our pumpkin hunt. So far, Brennan has seen every single pumpkin. He sees a pumpkin over here, a couple pumpkins actually over by the pool. This is sort of where it gets a little bit awkward, putting pumpkins over by the pool because I don't want to get too close with everybody swimming in the pool just to see which villains they are. So it looks like Oogie Boogie right over here just in the main portion of the pool and then I think that there's another one back over here. So this is Geyser Points and again we do have a reservation. Yes there's another one over here by the geyser itself which we'll come back for but let's have some lunch at the Geyser Point Bar and grill. So we got the Halloween margarita flight and they look beautiful. So gorgeous. starting here is the pumpkin patch. Yes. Blood that. orange, poison apple, and then black magic margarita. It is beautiful and it's just specifically for Halloween. So we got our food. Brennan got this right here. This is the slow roasted steak sandwich okay. with a smoked gouda cheese sauce, roasted bell peppers. Um, and arugula and caramelized onions and a pretzel roll and then some chips there on the side and then of course here's our margarita. We're actually going to be splitting this, uh, or margaritas, plural. Uh, this is the uh, handcrafted crab cakes served with their house spicy slaw and crispy fried onions. That looks delicious and then I just hit my camera on my big burger here. Um, <laughs> this is the bison burger with bacon, sweet crispy onion straws, marionberry sauce. Lettuce, tomato, and garlic aioli with some french fries. So we're gonna go and enjoy this and then continue our scavenger hunt around um, the Wilderness Lodge. It's right behind us, the geyser is going off. And I think we're going to be heading over there next because that's where our pumpkin is. I don't know how often the geyser erupts. But that is pretty cool to get to see that. We're gonna be up there on that walking pathway in just a minute. So we just finished with lunch at Geyser Point and that was one of the best meals that I think we've ever had. The quality of that food was phenomenal and now we're continuing our pumpkin scavenger hunt and like I pretty much just said, riding right over there. We're walking past the pool and just verifying that that is indeed Oogie Boogie and then our next pumpkin is right over here. All right, so we went ahead and we filled it in but over here by the geyser is Mother Gothel. So over by the pool, Oogie Boogie, it says he loves to play games, but he loves to cheat even more. Find this spider-filled nightmare where you can have pool party fun galore. That was over by the Copper Creek Springs Pool. And then where we are right now, which is the Fire Rock Geyser, 
is Mother Gothel. This self-centered mother stayed young for centuries because of a magical golden flower. She's biding her time near the water that explodes about once an hour. All right, so now we're heading over to the boat launch because we're pretty positive that there's going to be a pumpkin over here. Each clue does have like a reference to where a pumpkin will be. So just looking at those clues, we can sort of deduce where we need to head. And this is the boat launch to get to Magic Kingdom. Way over here by the water. They're pretty small, but we see it right up there. But I wonder which villain it is. There's a boat pulling in right now. It's a little bit hard to see because it's backlit up there, but that is Captain Hook. And the clue, it says, this pirate has a plan to get back at Pan. He's quite the evil plotter. He's staking out the boats at taxi guests across the water. So that's going to be Captain Hook at the boat launch. Okay, so we're looking at all of the clues and just trying to see where we need to go because it's pretty much sending us to all of the restaurants and gift shops and different portions of the resort. So I think we're going to head, I don't know. Do you want to go ahead and head to the, uh, the quick service, the Roaring Fork? Okay, we're gonna do all the inside stuff. So the boardwalk to the boats is back there and we're heading inside because this is the Roaring Fork quick service and there should be a pumpkin inside here. Okay, we're heading inside the Roaring Fork. I think Brennan said that she saw it. Oh, it's right there. So that is the pumpkin right there and it is a shadow man. It's Facilier. The shadow man has all kinds of voodoo and hoodoo up his sleeve. He's turning his tricks. We can grab quick bites and to go goodies. Well, look carefully, he's stinkier than you believe. <laughs> cool, so that is uh, Dr. Facilier mm -hmm. in uh, the Roaring Fork Quick Service. Okay, that was Roaring Fork back there, and we could go up this ramp, but I insisted that we go outside to go up the steps. Is it raining? It was raining earlier. No, it's not raining. So we're heading to Whispering Canyon Cafe next, because I think that that is one of the clues. So we're going back to the lobby, and then I think we're heading over to Boulder Ridge. I think, I think that there's a clue over there, but I don't totally know because I'm not too familiar with that side of the resort. So we're back in the lobby and I'm looking for a pumpkin somewhere over here. I think, I hope, that's my presumption. And there it is. What pumpkin is that? Is that Scar? I think it's Scar. All right, so I filled out the clue for that one. It says this ferocious feline was willing to do anything to take up the throne. You can spot him with a service skillet that you probably won't want to tackle alone. And now we're heading over to the Mercantile, the gift shop over here. So I was about to go inside the Mercantile, but Brennan found it all the way down here. I don't know if it's inside. I'll, okay, I'm gonna go down this way. This looks like Lincoln Logs. Did you find it? I did, yeah. Where is it? In the back. In the very back? Yeah. Oh, this one's difficult. I actually did not know this gift shop was this big. But it's all the way in the back. That looks like Lady Tremaine, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, so we're heading towards Boulder Ridge. The clue for that one, it says, when addressing her stepdaughter, this social climber does little to disguise her disgruntled sneers. She's shopping for her true daughters, where you can buy your souvenirs, which was here in the Mercantile. Now we're heading outside to go to the next location, hopefully. So we are on our way from the Copper Creek portion of Wilderness Lodge over towards Boulder Ridge, and we're stopping by the arcade because there's supposed to be, I think, pumpkin in here, which is, yep, there it is up there. So that is King Candy. And what it says here from him, he raced away from his own game when he could no longer be played. Find him before he infiltrates our whole entire arcade. That's why we're in the arcade right now. So that's King Candy. I like this thing because like, you could technically solve this by yourself without finding the pumpkins. Because the, the description of the villains and the locations, if you know the resort really well, you can figure it out. Well, it would have been incredibly challenging to find these pumpkins without any kind of a hint. Yeah. So I think we're going to head inside the lobby for Boulder Ridge, but we also want to go over to the buses because that, that is a, a clue. Yes, I can see the pumpkin straight ahead. So that is Shan Yu, who is a pretty particular villain to use. And let's see, where is he? Taking over China was this skilled warrior's evil fixation. He's plotting demise, or you can catch a bus to a magical destination, which is why we came over to the bus area. So I think we're heading inside the lobby over here. This one might be a little bit more challenging, but I do know that we're gonna go over to uh, the pool area. Okay, so we're inside the lobby for Boulder Ridge, and I think Brennan found it. Oh, that's the gym? Okay, but I'm looking around in here because there is supposed to be a pumpkin in an area that has to do with trains? Gaston. Gaston's in the gym? Mm -hmm. There he is, right there. Of course,
course Gaston would be in the gym, right? That makes sense. Okay, so I want to go over here next, but that one says he's got a neck that's very thick and an ego that's way overblown. He's busy admiring his muscles where you might go to exercise on your own. And now we just need to find the location that has to do with trains because that's where one of the pumpkins is supposed to be. So there's a model train right here of the Walt Disney World Railroad. So we have to be getting close, I think, to the pumpkin. And across from that one, there's another train. This clue specifically says, this hot-tempered queen beheads those who offend her without even letting them explain. She is seething away with a very special historic train. But where's the pumpkin? Oh, where's the pumpkin? All right, so we came outside because there's the Boulder Ridge pool area back over here, which there should be a pumpkin here as well. At least then to go back and try to find another pumpkin, wherever it is. I guess just for reference, we are all the way over by the Cascade Cabins in the Boulder Ridge portion of the Wilderness Lodge next to the Boulder Ridge Cove pool. And we came over from the Copper Creek Springs and then there's some more cabins over there. There's the boat launch and then the geyser and then the geyser point bar and grill where we had lunch. We're just trying to figure out where these final couple pumpkins are. I don't really want to go inside the, the pool area there. So I'll probably walk around it and see what I can see. At least I'm presuming that the pumpkin is supposed to be here, but this is a bigger pool than I anticipated, but I might be able to see it better from the other side. That is Geyser Point, just straight ahead. And now I'm on the other side of the pool, hoping that I can see a pumpkin from over here, just from a vantage point that I wouldn't be able to see from the other side. This is pretty interesting. These pumpkins were very easy to find when we first started this, and now we're really having some trouble. Okay, I'm trying to keep my eyes open for a pumpkin, which you would think, being as vibrant as it would be, would be pretty easy to spot, but I don't see one. All right, so I'm going to have to pass through the Cascade Cabin area to head back over to the other side of the pool because I cannot find this pumpkin. Brennan actually went back inside and she found the other pumpkin that we were looking for. The clue for this one says, this oversized crustacean loves his shiny treasures. Hoarding Maui's hook is not a passing whim. Find him in all his sparkly trinkets where you can take a quiet early morning swim, which is what I presumed would have been the pool over here. Hello. Hi. So you found the pumpkin inside? I did. Well, Made you're me mad. pretty lucky because I have been looking for this pumpkin over here for so long and I do not see it. I bet it's somewhere where you have to be inside the pool area to see it. We can't get it in. So we're heading back inside because we at least want to cross off the second to last one that we need to find on our list and then we'll try to come back over here we'll just see where this final pumpkin is. It's really quiet in here and we're trying to be respectful of people that are actually enjoying this area, but I guess it actually isn't here. We just walked past it. So kudos to Brennan for finding this one. This one's hard. It's way up there in the light and it's the Queen of Hearts. So the clue for this one is this hot-tempered queen beheads those who offend her without even letting them explain. She is seething away with a very special historic train, which is why we came to this room in particular, and we finally found it. And then we have one final pumpkin to find somewhere over by a pool. It's at a pool, there's two pools. So we're going to make a lap probably around the pool again because Brennan didn't make that lap with me, so maybe she'll be able to see something that I could not see. And then I guess I don't really know because we can decipher like what it is without actually having seen the pumpkin, but the whole point of this is to see the pumpkin. Because again, these are pretty easy villains and then pretty reasonably easy locations to decipher. All right, so we exited the main Boulder Ridge building and came around the corner to the pool. Let's see if Brennan can have more luck than I can with finding this pumpkin. Okay, so we were led into the pool area by a cast member, so now we're just walking around and seeing if we can find this pumpkin that we could not see from outside of the pool area. We're literally checking everywhere we can for this pumpkin that allegedly exists over here. Okay, so I feel what pretty accomplished heck? with this. I finally found it. It's the crab from Moana. I forgot his name, but there he is just the in the tree. That's his name? I think so, yeah. That one was really challenging. I'm glad I found the Queen of Hearts one. Right? Like, I would have thought it was, would it be like just on the rocks or on this like structure in the middle of the pool? But we did it. This oversized crustacean loves his shiny treasures. Hoarding Maui's hook was not a passing whim. Find him and all his sparkly trinkets where you can take a quiet early morning swim. It got and real we, good at the end. I know, right? And we did talk to a, a cast member who, who didn't know where it was, but he presumed that this would have been the pool, so he just sort of justified our presumption because this pool opens before the other one does. <sighs> we did, did it. it. So we've done it. We've officially completed all of the pumpkins on our scavenger hunt and we're heading back to the lobby to collect our prize. Alright, we're heading back inside the main lobby, passing by the gift shop, 
and then just right around the corner where the, uh, the check-in area is. And the grand prize for completing this complimentary free scavenger hunts. Can you even see it? It's oh, a dear. button! There are buttons. I said I found 13 pumpkins at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. I can read. <laughs> <laughs> 13 pumpkins. Nice and lucky, right? Yeah. Last time we were here, this was closed for a brief refurbishment. It's this area that just leads out outside, which is pretty fun. But yeah, now we're gonna go ahead and head back to the car and arrive home and uh, carve some pumpkins for Halloween, which is in just a couple days. Wilderness Lodge continues to be one of my favorite Disney resorts and just activities like this. And then also the Hidden Mickey scavenger hunt, which we didn't even get to do, just make me excited to come back. And then eating at new places, especially one as good as Geyser Point was awesome. Farewell Disney's Wilderness Lodge. I hope we're back soon. It was fun. All right, so we are back home and we're about to carve our pumpkins for this year's Halloween season and I am carving Mrs. Potts. Oh my God, her little spout is so huge at that angle. And then Brennan <laughs> has decided to carve a Pokemon and you're carving... Gengar! Gengar, who is not up here Spooky. at all. I was actually inspired to do this when uh, we went to the North Carolina um, State Fair and there was a Mrs. Potts there that won second place. So I'm going to make a first place Mrs. Potts, and it's going to be pretty cool. I bought a bunch of paint, and then I guess we're going to get started here before the sun goes down. It's getting pretty close, and you can see our Mickey and Minnie right outside there. Can you see them? Yes. I'm going to crouch down. There they are. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny because I have a remote control that I use to turn them off every day. Can you actually hand that to me? I'm going to, I'm going to do it real quick before I forget to. Thank so you. I'm going to have it focus outside. Okay, so watch this when I turn them off. When I turn them off, <laughs> they, go. Oh, no. they just collapse, <laughs> and they're just they're on the ground. Oh, and now I have to go outside to inflate them again. Hey, Arlo, you ready to carve some pumpkins? He's uh, he just wants the. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you like the autumn leaves? What about Mrs. Potts? <laughs> She's too big. What is this clip right now? So this is where we're going to be carving our pumpkins, and it's a little bit dark in here because I've put up. These Halloween lights. It's like a Halloween wonderland of spooky webbing in here in our kitchen. <laughs> so we have our pumpkins and it's sort of interesting. So this one's Brennan's and it's like leaning. Leaning, it's like sitting sideways. So that's going to be her Gengar. And then this big pumpkin is going to be my Mrs. Potts. So I feel like the majority of the evening is going to be spent to just de gutting these pumpkins. And I'm sure you're asking, Brennan, you have the smaller pumpkin. Why aren't you making it chip? Because I'm not that creative. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a limited amount of paint. <laughs> I also wanted to show off, so we got this candy for trick-or-treaters. Just this massive value pack of fruity candy, which I enjoy. And then a massive pack of variety Tootsie candy, mm -hmm. which I also enjoy. And if we don't hand it all out, I won't be mad. I also have... These uh, booster bundles here, which I'm going to put in this bucket. I finally found an orange bucket at McDonald's for their current Happy Meal promotion. Wait, are you giving these out on Halloween? Yeah, the booster packs. Oh my god, that's so cute. That's the point of them. I didn't know that. They're just a couple cards in I there. I was just going to use them for reference. See? Gengar. Yeah, it's Gengar. <laughs> yeah, but each pack comes with just three cards. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's fun. That's really cute, actually. I like that a lot. Speaking of candy, do you want to dump out our... Not so scary candy from last night. We went to Not So Scary last night, and we are just plowing yeah. through. And the surprisingly, we didn't activities. Like I, we haven't looked to see what kind of candy we got. Oh, well, we got a map. <laughs> it's like pouring out like a box of uh, cereal. <laughs> I thought that this bowl would be big enough for both of these, but it's not. So. That's how much candy that we got. got Two entire bowls worth of candy from Magic Kingdom last night. I'm over here by Arlo, who is excited and overwhelmed per usual. And then there's Farley, and then Calvin's in the window, and then here's the other side of our Halloween wonderland. And Brennan's probably going to turn on the lights here so we can actually see to carve the pumpkins. So bright! Less spooky. I have these two that we got from Spirit Halloween, which is where we got our costumes yesterday for Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. I hope these have improved over the years because I feel like we used these as a kid and they were I think these are not great. pretty good. They'll oh, be, they are pretty heavy. They'll be better than, uh, I think, 
just our general kitchen utensils. All right, so Brennan has got her lid off and she is carving away inside that pumpkin and that utensil is hopefully working pretty well. Yeah, okay. surprisingly well. And I have my lid right here, I'm pulling it off. <laughs> Ew. And there's the inside of a pumpkin. What do you think, Arlo? Okay, so we are all done cleaning up the inside of our pumpkins, which actually did not take very long at all with these utensils, so I'm very happy that we got those. Yeah. Britain was a little bit concerned that she wouldn't be able to put her lid back on just due to the angle of fine. the pumpkin, but it's okay. So pretty much what we're doing now, Britain's looking at stencils for Gengar, the Pokemon. Yeah. And I have all of my paint here and my paintbrushes that I'm going to use. I bought this spool here, uh, and the idea for this was I'm not really even going to use the the string. I just I got it for for this. This is going to be the nose, I think, of Mrs. Potts. Hopefully, it's not too small. <laughs> I don't think so. It should it should be okay. You'll you'll get the idea, I think. But <laughs> pretty much my first step is going to be just painting this entire pumpkin white. Okay, so a little bit of an update. Brennan has stenciled her Gengar. I freehanded it the best. <laughs> I, I just watched it go into a frame. I'm sorry. I stenciled it the best I could. You want to show them what pen you used? So okay, I got these this pen pack for work at Five Below, and it comes with. Oh, it's like not in frame, but I got this one and I call it my Squidward pen because it, The pen is bounding as Squidward, you know, it's just do you agree? I agree. It looks like Squidward. <laughs> it's my Squidward pen. I've painted Mrs. Potts under pot here. Under pot? Yeah, so as soon as this dries I'll be able to flip her over onto a paper plate and also I'm enjoying this thematic spooky Mountain Dew. Mm-hmm as well as the world's largest Twizzlers. Have you ever wanted a Twizzler, but you're like, you're like, wow, I wish this was three times longer. <laughs> now you can do that. Now you can enjoy the Twizzler. That's just way too long. You can share them with my mom. My mom likes Twizzlers. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Brennan's getting pretty close. She's cut on the top of Gengar there, and I've pretty much painted Mrs. Potts. I put down a trash bag here just because it's going to get pretty messy. Pretty quickly, once it's dries, I'll flip her over. I think I'm gonna go ahead and start on the lid now. So I'm gonna paint this purple, I think. And then what I think I also might do, and I saw this in the picture that I took from the uh, North Carolina State Fair, I might flip her over and put her on like a paper plate and then paint the paper plate too, to be like her like base. Oh, that'd be cute. Okay, so I got my chip mug out. <laughs> I did not know the liquid inside this was clear. That's actually kind of weird. <laughs> um, but I've painted my plate. There, and my lid. Vernon is getting very close on her Gengar. Arlo is down there somewhere. And I think I'm about to flip this over and start painting some more. Essentially, I just need to get my base colors and then I can kind of go from there and I'm using Chip as like a, an example. Okay, so Brennan is done stenciling and now she's about to paint her Gengar purple <laughs> using the purple that I've been using for my Mrs. Potts, which I'm about to actually start on her in just a minute because I've just been sort of getting her primary color situated over there. But yeah, here comes purple Gengar. <laughs> okay, so I pretty much finished my Gengar. I, the only thing I'm waiting on is for this paint to dry and then I'm just gonna put a couple like pupils with the black paint over here, but... I have my stencil in Mrs. Potts. <laughs> she <laughs> yeah, looks girl. a little bit scary. I have this right here, which will be her nose, I hope. Her spout. Um, so yeah, we'll see if this works out. I don't really know. You don't sound confident. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. All right, so I'm making some progress on Mrs. Potts. I'm a little bit intimidated by what I have created, but I'm, I'm sure it'll look nice once my vision is concluded. And right now, Brennan, what are you doing? I'm making my pumpkin seeds. Yeah, so Brennan took her, her pumpkins and... I will have her pumpkin seeds out of her pumpkin, and she seasoned them. And now you're going to roast them, right? Yep. Cool. What'd you, uh, what'd you do to them? Um, butter... Some magi sauce, cause I like it. Um, a little bit of cayenne and some onion powder. Cool. And you're just gonna put this in the oven for how long? It's like only 15 minutes, honestly. And 350 degrees? Yeah. Cool. All right, Mrs. Potts is looking less like Pinocchio. Brennan put some pupils on Gengar <laughs> over there and she's getting out her, uh, what are these pumpkin seeds? Yeah, you wanna try one? I don't know, do I? What the heck, you've had my pumpkin seeds before. How do I do this? You... Eat it. Eat it. <laughs> I was gonna blow on it first, but... That's how's, pretty good. How's the seasoning? That's good. Need more? I think it's perfect. Super salty. But delightful. 
Yeah. I'm standing underneath this light right now. They're really good. <laughs> okay, so this is the current status of the pumpkins. I'm getting close. It doesn't seem like it, but really I just kind of keep accenting it and I just need to add coats on top of what I've already done. So I've added some makeup. Uh, I'm doing some eyeliner. I'll add some mascara and then some blush probably. Brennan has painted her Gengar's <laughs> teeth white. I don't know if that was the right decision. <laughs> it does look like a game at like Dave and Buster's where you would like <laughs> throw a ball to knock down his teeth to win so tickets. So you said you're going to add mascara to her. How are you going to do that? I don't know. Did I say mascara? <laughs> yeah. I said I said eyeliner you and and you gonna give her little eyelashes? I think so. I'll just paint them on. There you go. Okay. Yes, I did mean mascara because she's she's a very makeup lady. Makeup lady. And she definitely needs some more expressiveness to her face. <laughs> um, so I'm working on this right now. I have my pink and my blue paint. I've added the gold like accents to her like lid, and this is her base. Um, she does have a handle. I'm gonna go ahead and just pretend that she doesn't, uh, because I have nothing to add to make into a handle, and it just, it's just gonna be all about what's here that matters the most. And it's also getting late, so I need to go ahead and finish this up. So I finished painting this, I think it turned out pretty well. I'm gonna give that time to dry, and then give it another coat, and I've reassessed her makeup situation. Brittany gave me a bit of a tutorial on makeup, so I gave her eyeshadow, I'm gonna give her eyelashes, and eyebrows, and blush, and just generally try to improve her, because she does still startle. All right, so I've pretty much added the layers of paint that I wanted to add to my pumpkin. I've added some eyelashes, and I believe my final step is going to be to add some eyebrows because <laughs> she looks like a clown. All right, so I don't think the paint is completely dry, but we've been working on this for several hours, so I think this is probably as close as it's going to get to completely being done. I think Mrs. Potts' face looks Sincerely terrifying, but it's it's pretty close, honestly. <laughs> I'm mostly proud of this, which is probably going to be crushed by the weight of the pumpkin, but that's okay. The lid looks pretty uh, pretty nice, so it looks beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and take Mrs. Potts and put her on her little plate. Okay, that's not terrible. That's not bad. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this and plop it on top. I gotta figure this out. Okay. There's Mrs. Potts. There you go. That's not bad. Okay. She, she looks like a clown. Hey, lady. And Gengar with your weird white <laughs> prison bar teeth. Okay, so we purchased these lights. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the lids off of our respective pumpkins. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the lights in there. So there's Gengar's lights. And then here's Mrs. Potts' lights. And this might be sort of subtle, but let's see what it ends up looking like. All right, you ready? Yep. Turn off the lights. <laughs> Wait for it, there it is. Cute. Oh, it's so stroby. Yeah, it's supposed to simulate like an actual um, <laughs> flickering candle. <laughs> you know what, that doesn't look bad. Good job. I like that a lot. <laughs> Just silhouetted underneath the webbing of, of Halloween lights in our kitchen. It's actually pretty incredible. Just all of the insecurities that we had about our carvings and how much better it looks with just the candle. I'm actually really proud of what we ended up doing with this. Oh, and then of course Brennan brought Chip to be next to Mrs. Potts. We did it, Brennan. We carved pumpkins. We did it. So happy Halloween from me. And Roy's creepy avatar Aang mask. This mask came with the <laughs> Aang costume that I wore to Mickey's Not So Scary yesterday, but masks are not allowed in the park, and this is terrifying. So It's so frightening. I put it in our front door like window, and I felt so bad because I left it there, and we got an Amazon delivery, and like right where they put our package, like they had to have seen. This is <laughs> terrifying just to see in our window, and Arlo is... Very intimidated by it too, but I think he's <laughs> been enjoying it. Um, so this is probably going to be the final video of us just celebrating and enjoying yeah. Halloween today. We went to, and this was very last minute, we just found out about this, that um, the Wilderness Lodge is doing a pumpkin scavenger hunt. I hope and it ended again. up being so much fun. It was really and cute. finally getting to go to Geyser Point, like, what a fun day. I think that's why I liked it, because it was one of those things where it's like, we love scavenger hunts, and then it gave us a good excuse to go, like, have lunch somewhere new. Right? And I hope you go back because it was phenomenal and just the atmosphere and environment that is the Wilderness Lodge is beautiful and incredible. Yeah. 
And then we came home, and then we uh, carved pumpkins, which I think turned out pretty good and pretty entertaining. Yes. A little bit terrifying, but then also I think we did a pretty good job with just what we decided to do with relatively last minute, just uh, deciding that I was going to do Mrs. Potts and, mm -hmm. and getting all of that paint, and then you decided to go and just do Gengar because it's kind of like the a fun Halloween thing. image of Mrs. Theme. Potts without eyebrows will forever be burned into my brain. I think she looks pretty good, and it, <laughs> we're doing this... This will probably be either on Halloween or just right after Halloween when I find the post this because I've been trying to really just do all of the Halloween stuff as much as I can, as last minute as I can, and then just put it on YouTube. Um, so we've really just been doing like a Halloween week, really, essentially. Mm -hmm. Just, I guess I've been kind of doing a lot of stuff on my own, but it's been a lot of fun to do it nonetheless. Yeah. Halloween's fun. And now we're finally moving into Christmas. But... Thank you for hanging out with us and enjoying the Halloween season. We had a phenomenal time, so we will see you soon. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Happy Halloween, and goodbye. Bye.